This is Twit. Zoom's encryption story, take three. And I'm being kind. <laughs> Only Uh-oh. saying three. Yeah. Last Wednesday, in an apparent effort to deal with his company's recent spate of confused mixed messages regarding Zoom's actual plans for enforcing truly secure end-to-end encrypted teleconferences, Eric Wan attempted to clean things up in a blog. Eric wrote exactly the following. Since releasing the draft design of Zoom's end-to-end encryption on May 22nd, We've engaged with civil liberties organizations, our CISO council, child safety advocates, encryption experts, government representatives, our own users, and others to gain to gather their feedback on this feature. We've also explored new technologies to enable us to offer end-to-end encryption to all tiers of users. Today, Zoom released an updated end-to-end encryption design on GitHub. And I looked and there, it was just like commas and dots and things were changed, no biggies. He said, we are also pleased to share that we have identified a path forward that balances the legitimate right of all users to privacy and the safety of users on our platform. This will enable us to offer end-to-end encryption as an advanced add-on feature for all users around the globe, free and paid, while maintaining the ability to prevent and fight abuse on our platform. Yeah, there's your, there's your clause. Uh huh. To make this possible, free slash basic users seeking access to end-to-end encryption will participate in a one-time process that will prompt the user for additional information such as verifying a phone number via a text message. Many leading companies perform similar steps on account creation to reduce mass creation of of abusive accounts. We're confident that by implementing risk-based authentication in combination with our current mix of tools, including including our report a user function, we can continue to fight and prevent abuse. Um, Then under additional information, he said just four bullet points, we plan to begin early beta of the end-to-end encryption feature in July. All Zoom users will continue to use AES-256 GCM transport encryption as the default encryption, one of the strongest encryption standards in use today. And note, that's the way they're differentiating. They're saying transport encryption as opposed to um, end to full end. end-to-end encryption. Right. Then they says E2EE will be an optional feature as it limits some meeting functionality, such as the ability to include traditional dial-up phone lines or uh, uh, voice over IP, hardware conference room systems. Hosts will toggle E2E on and off on a per-meeting basis. And actually, I believe they meant only on because they have previously said it will absolutely not be turn offable once it's been turned on. Then he finally, the fourth bullet point, bullet point, account administrators can enable and disable end to end encryption at the account and group level. And he finishes, we are grateful to those who have provided their input on our E to E E design, both technical and philosophical. We encourage everyone to continue to share their views throughout this complex, ongoing process. So So, it feels to me like, honestly, they're trying to distract everybody from the real issue, which is, is it really end to end encryption? Yes. Um, Well, and and I'm still unclear on that. What what is your opinion on that? So my opinion is. They have royally screwed the pooch, and we, I, no one is ever going to trust them again. Uh, you know, so so they're trying to say, and and there had this is the um, Alex has sort of talked about this. I, I'd seen references to it. The idea being that 
if they can th- – th- their concern is that there's rampant abuse of encrypted teleconferences because of the abuse of anonymity and that if they can trade enhanced security for some reduction uh, in anonymity, that that, allow, that that will put off the abusers – who will not want to give a phone number, which is then tied to their uh, uh, conferencing. Um, yeah, and that, all that, and, that makes you know, sense, but I, it doesn't address the end-to-end encryption part of it. It's just talking about authentication. I keep feeling, feeling like they're trying to say, pay no attention to that. Here's what we're going to do for authentication. Or, But when they talk about this turning on this better-than-transport encryption... Yeah. And the same time as they talk about that, don't they still say, but we'll be able to help law enforcement or we'll be able to give – I mean, don't they imply – Well, you notice there was none of that language in his right. blog posting. You know, what what we know happened is there was a huge backlash from the industry at large at the idea that – that encryption was not going to be available for the free tier. Yeah. And then there was all this back and forth double talk about it. And, you know, my feeling is after their out of the gate stumbles, uh, they had one chance at redemption at, 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 at redemption. You know, the, the very first, you know, initial problems they jumped on. Uh, but as we know, through a bizarre lack of messaging coherence, they they just confused everybody. Well, and I think I that's think, intentional is what I think. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you think? Maybe. <laughs> I, I think they lost any hope right. forever of convincing those who most have a need for easy-to-use, really encrypted, warrant-proof conferencing – that Zoom is the place to get it. Right. It just no one is going to trust them or believe them again. And as you said, even now, it's there's still it's not clear. some some confusion. Is it warrant proof or isn't it? That's by the way, that's a good test. And they've implied right. that they will help, but only in the case of uh, child sex abuse material. But if but that's not the issue. And I feel like there's a lot of hand waving. I don't even think the yep. free versus paid is the issue if none of it is end to end. And that's the well, real the, issue. Are, the, correct. And their original issue with paid is that paying means there's a money trail. Right. And that creates a tighter identity confirmation. Yeah, but that's not the question I had. Maybe some people have. I know, I know. I completely agree. And, and but you know, Leo, what's interesting, I because I thought about this, no one has any similar concern about Apple. Apple has right. played the encryption issue exactly right from day one. Everyone knows that Apple's products are as absolutely and truly secure as Apple is capable of making them. Any mistakes that they or others find are immediately fixed. And Apple's very public fights with law enforcement have only proven to enhance their well-deserved reputation. Does FaceTime, so, do you it's think end-to-end, -end, they don't have any, th that's warrant-proof encryption in FaceTime, at least person-to-person, -person, right? Apple doesn't yes. have the keys to that. Well, no, and I still argue that if you're not managing the keys, somebody else is. That's my point, exactly. And yeah. if somebody else is, that, that gives them the opportunity whether they take it or not. Right. So not, you know, nothing we've seen has shown how they could engineer themselves out of that position, you know, and we've seen things that like, well, iCloud isn't encrypted. And if the, if the, uh, terrorists hadn't, uh, rest or if the FBI hadn't shut down and restarted the phone, blah, 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 yeah, blah, we blah. Know, you know I mean? I, we like know Apple retains the keys to iCloud. That's known. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is the case, though, that an iPhone has a secure enclave, generates its own keys, and so a point-to-point -point call between in FaceTime yes. should be fully encrypted. There's no Apple in, in in between. I don't know how group calling. This is the challenge Zoom faces and everybody else's is, is group calling, right? Because you have to route video, <laughs> unencrypted right. video at the at the server, right? So well, you know, and I've and I've listened to you talk about this uh, across Twit. 
And I agree with you that it's unclear, it's just unclear. how much Zoom style teleconferencing really needs uber secure end to end encryption anyway. Right. As we know, their post COVID usage explosion is almost entirely replacing meetings, you know, such as yoga classes yeah, who cares? and traditional classrooms. Right. They were publicly accessible and never particularly secure in the first place. But there so, are dissidents, there are uh, psycho psychotherapists yeah. and psychiatrists, there are medical doctors. You know, HIPAA has been suspended for the nonce, so it, it's not even a HIPAA issue. But uh, it, there's still, there's some reason people might want to have really private conversations on Zoom. Yeah. Not all of them nefarious. If you run a Jitsi server, you have transport encryption decrypted at the server. But if you run the server, you still retain the keys. So it right. is possible to do something like that if you right. run your own server. I just don't, I think, I'm, it's my guess, and I wish they'd be clear about this, that they do retain the keys to it. Right? Zoom does. We've seen nothing to say they don't. Well, the, um, the, the, the document says that their technology does negotiate end to end and that they have no visibility oh, okay. into the keys. Okay. So, you know, if, if that document is adopted and, you know, and that's sort of the question, too, is that it's not open that's source. Just a, that's just it's a, right. Well, it's just a design goal. Right. 